Hello, my name is Wade with the Tech and Install Department here at Lumber Liquidators. And today we're going to do a tap-in joint laminate demonstration using a St. James 12 millimeter African mahogany laminate floor. The first thing you want to do when you bring it home is set it in the middle of your room away from exterior walls and vents. And if you have a concrete floor, make sure you put sticks or plastic down to help block moisture from the concrete from affecting your floor when you're acclimating the product. Normally laminate floors require 48 hours for acclimation. Read the instructions because it may take longer. Um, your normal temperature in the room should be between 60 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit and your humidity, humidity should be between 35 and 65 percent, normally a maximum of 75 percent with laminates. After acclimating the floor, moisture testing is the next step in the process. This is what you call a surface concrete moisture meter. This tool is used as a surveying tool, so you want to test several areas of your concrete to see if there's any elevated moisture anywhere in your concrete subfloor. If you're looking at the top row of numbers, anything over 3% with this meter indicates excessive amount of moisture in the slab. And if you're getting that reading, you want to make sure you take extra steps and do a calcium chloride test to determine how much moisture is actually in the slab. After moisture testing, the next step is to check the subfloor for flatness. To do this, normally installers can use a level or straight edge, but in this case, if you don't have one, you can use a long laminate plank. So what you'll do, you take your longest laminate plank and you just run it over your subfloor in any direction to see if there's any high or low spots. You're trying to have the subfloor to be flat within one eighth of an inch over six feet. After you clean the floor and you test it for flatness, the next step is to put down your moisture barrier. We use the Dream Home 6 mil poly sheeting as a moisture barrier. Even if you're using a premium underlayment pad, you want to use a moisture barrier under the pad when installing a laminate floor over concrete. Now that you got your moisture barrier down, this is the Dream Home 6 mil poly sheeting. The next step is to use an underlayment cushion. Even if your laminate has a pad attached, you can use a premium cushion like the Bellawood Premium Underlayment, uh, as long as the manufacturer of the product says it's okay to do. We're choosing the Bellawood underlayment today because it has superior sound dending qualities, it's antimicrobial, and it also provides moisture protection, which is an extra value to any home. Pads like this are also recommended by condo associations because of the fact that it will deaden sound transfer below two other floors. You want to keep this underlayment about a half inch away from your, your walls or, or any fixed object. This allows the room for the air to circulate around the perimeter and evaporate. When installing the next row of underlayment, you want to peel back the adhesive strip. This allows the film on the underlayment to bond to the previous row. Right now I'm using the overlap flap that comes with the Bellawood underlayment and overlapping the previous row of underlayment that I've installed. This will provide a moisture protection seal to help block moisture from coming from below. Now that we have our Bellawood underlayment installed, we can begin the laminate installation. Uh, you always want to read the installation instructions before you install any laminate floor. Uh, for this laminate floor, we want to start with the longer groove side facing away from the wall and the smaller tongue side facing the wall. To begin our installation off of our starting wall, first we want to get us a nice straight chalk line. So to do this, we want to measure the width of the plank and you can measure the full width of the plank, including the tongue. And in this one, you're getting about six inches. Now you take your six inches from the width of the board and add your 5 sixteenths spacer. So now you have six inches and 5 sixteenths. Um, and you measure away from the wall, six inches and 5 sixteenths, and you put a mark on the floor. You also do it on the opposite wall, measure again six inches six inches and five sixteenths and put another mark. Between those two marks, you're gonna pop a chalk line to give you a straight starting line. If you don't have a tape measure or you're not sure on how to read a tape measure, there's another easy way to get a starting line off your starting wall without using a tape measure and I'm gonna show you that right now. So what you'll do is you take your, your spacer and your laminate plank and you put it up against the wall and you can actually put a mark right here 
on the floor. Now that we have our first mark, we'll take the spacer and its plank to the opposite side of the wall and place another mark. And with those two marks, we can pop our chalk line. Because not all walls are straight, we use this chalk line as a guide to keep the first row of, of laminate straight. To install a tap-in joint laminate floor, you're gonna need the Lumber Liquidators Laminate Install Kit. In the kit, it comes with a pull bar, a tapping block, and spacers. The first thing we're gonna do is put our spacers on, against the wall. I took two spacers and actually used blue tape to tape them together. It gives you a thickness of 5 16 And we'll place it behind the first row of laminate, but also, because we're installing this left to right, we're also placing them in the left side wall. We're using the blue tape to hold the spacer to the drywall. The reason we're doing that is because the drywall is raised up off of the concrete. So to hold the spacer in place, we're using this blue tape. Painter's tape won't harm the paint that's on your wall. It, it, it comes off really easy without any harm to your paint. Now we're gonna begin the installation of the first row of laminate. Again, we're gonna start in the left-hand corner and work to the right. I'm gonna install two planks. I normally try to use the longer planks for the first row. And then we're gonna to go to the second row. So you don't have to do the whole first row for this type of laminate. You can actually do two planks on the first row and then go to the second row. And I'm gonna demonstrate it here. So put your first plank against your spacers, the ones behind the row and the ones to the side. For the second plank, you can either keep a space between the two and then tap the ends together, or you can lift the second plank up at an angle over this lip and push the two together, making sure that the seam is nice and even and there's no width sticking out. It should be nice and tight. And push it against your spacers. Now we're ready to begin our second row. The first plank in the second row, you want to keep a stagger between the seams of a minimum of, of at least six inches. You want to make sure you read the instructions because you may, they may require you to leave 10 inches, maybe even 12 inches. So be sure to read the installation instructions. We also, with this product, we have different sizes and lengths. So you want to mix these different sizes up. You don't want to have all one size in one place. So all the different sizes, you want to mix them up. To start the second row, the first plank will lift at a 45 degree angle and will push it into the first row. Make sure the seam is nice and tight and then just give it a good push down and it's locked in. You also want to make sure it's tight against the spacer. Another way to do this, if you're having trouble getting a nice tight fit into the previous row, you can actually lightly tap on the back of the board to get it to lock in and then push it down. Okay, now we're gonna install the second plank in the second row. And we'll do the same thing as we did for the first plank. We'll lift it up at an angle, but we leave a space between the first plank and the second plank, normally about a quarter inch. So you'll lock it in on the long side first. Make sure it's locked in all the way. Now you see there's a gap between the two. And we're gonna use this tapping block to close up that gap. But before we do that, we'll take another plank and we'll place it over the seam to, to create a bridge. So this will help while you're tapping this plank over to keep them at the same height. And we use our tapping block to tap the planks over. Now that you put two planks in the second row, you can continue going to the third row. Now after you put a plank in the third row, you can go back to the first row 
then second row, third row, and then a fourth row. So you can keep going in an upward stagger. You don't have to do each row and then move to the next row. When you get to the last board in a row, you want to use a, a laminate pull bar so you can shift the last board over to close up the gap. The reason you use this is because it's going to have a wall and you can't get your mallet over there because the wall's in the way. So this allows you to shift the board over with your mallet with no worry about the wall. Before I tap this last board over, I'll put my weight on the previous board so it doesn't move as I'm tapping the last board in a row. As you can see, the gap is now closed. After installation, you're going to have a lot of dust from the saws and cutting the laminate floor. Um, so to clean that, you can actually use the damp mop that comes in the Bellawood Floor Care Kit and the Dream Home Laminate Floor Cleaner to clean your new laminate floor. What you'll do is you'll shake it up just a little bit, sp spray the solution onto your, your damp mop cloth. You just want to get it damp, you don't want to have to get it soaking wet. Start cleaning off any dust that you may have. As you just saw, that was a quick and easy installation using a tap-in joint laminate floor.